They say if you stare long enough at Mars through a telescope, you can almost imagine the ghosts of explorers who dreamed of stepping there first. For centuries, it's been the ultimate symbol of human curiosity. A distant, blood-red world that felt close enough to touch, yet impossibly far away. But what if Mars isn't just another planet in our night sky? What if it's our future home, a new cradle for humanity after Earth's twilight? Mars, the red planet. A world of endless dust, frozen deserts, and alien silence. A planet that has both seduced and defied us for generations. The story of Mars begins long before humanity ever looked up at it. Billions of years ago, Mars was not the barren wasteland we see today. It had rivers that carved through valleys, lakes that shimmered beneath a blue sky, and possibly life. Imagine that, another world, once alive. Then, something happened. Its magnetic field faded, its atmosphere thinned, and the planet slowly died. The rivers dried up, the sky turned pink, then red. The world froze, leaving only traces of its once vibrant past buried beneath the dust. But here's where the story takes a turn. Because now, billions of years later, Mars is waiting for a new kind of life. Us. The dream of reaching Mars isn't new. In 1877, when Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli mapped the planet and described its mysterious canali, the world went wild. Canali meant channels in Italian, but newspapers mistranslated it as canals, implying intelligent Martians had built vast irrigation systems. It sparked a global obsession. Authors like H.G. Wells imagined alien invasions. Scientists speculated about Martian civilizations. For decades, people genuinely believed we weren't alone. Then came the truth. No canals, no Martians. Just rocks, dust, and silence. Yet somehow, that made Mars even more fascinating. Because if life could have existed there, maybe it could exist again. Maybe we could be that life. Fast forward to the 21st century. Robots became our pioneers. Curiosity, opportunity, perseverance. Names that sound almost poetic in hindsight. Machines that rolled across alien soil. Drilling, sampling, searching for whispers of ancient water or microbial fossils. They found the clues we'd been hoping for. Riverbeds, minerals that only form in liquid water, organic molecules, chemical breadcrumbs pointing to a world that once might have breathed. And then came the boldest question of all. If Mars once supported life, could it support ours? That question launched an entirely new race. Not between nations, but between visionaries. SpaceX's Elon Musk speaks of building a city on Mars by the mid-21st century. NASA dreams of the Artemis generation stepping off a lander and into the red dust. China, Europe, India, all are eyeing the same target. Mars has become humanity's finish line and perhaps its lifeboat. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Mars doesn't want us there. Its air is thin, made mostly of carbon dioxide. Its average temperature is minus 60 degrees Celsius. Its soil is toxic, laced with perchlorates that would poison crops. The sunlight is weak, the storms are deadly, and radiation would fry an unprotected human in days. Every single thing about Mars screams, you don't belong here. And yet humans are a stubborn species. We crossed oceans, climbed mountains, and ventured into space. Not because it was easy, but because it was hard. And that same spirit is now focused on making Mars not just survivable, but livable. How? The plans are both brilliant and terrifying. Some propose domed habitats, massive glass cities powered by solar arrays, sealed from the deadly atmosphere. Others imagine terraforming, releasing greenhouse gases, melting polar ice caps, thickening the air, and warming the planet until water flows again. It's science fiction teetering on the edge of science fact. But even if we can build a home on Mars, can we truly live there? Imagine a colony of a thousand people waking under an alien sunrise. Their homes hum quietly with recycled air. Their water comes from melted ice. Their food grown in hydroponic farms under artificial light. Every breath, every sip, every seed is precious. 
There's no blue sky, no rain, no birdsong, only the constant awareness that one small mistake could mean death. And yet, in that harshness, there would be beauty. The first human child born on Mars, the first city lights on another world, the first generation of Martians. But with those dreams come questions that cut deeper than science. If we colonize Mars, are we saving humanity or running from our failures on Earth? Is Mars our fresh start or our escape plan? Some argue that we have no right to claim another planet, that before we go, we must fix the one we already have. Others say our survival depends on spreading beyond Earth, that life confined to a single world is too fragile to last forever. Maybe both are true. Maybe Mars is not just our next home, but our test. A test of whether humanity can learn from its mistakes and start anew without repeating them. There's another layer of mystery still unsolved. We may not be the first life to touch Mars. Deep beneath the surface, shielded from radiation, there could still be microbial organisms clinging to existence. If we find them, it would change everything we know about life in the universe. But it would also force us to confront a haunting dilemma. What happens if we're not alone and we're about to invade someone else's world? NASA's Perseverance rover is already collecting samples that might hold the answer. One day, those samples will be brought back to Earth, and inside a sealed lab, a scientist may peer through a microscope and see something move. Not dust, not a trick of light, but life. Alien, ancient, and undeniably real. And when that moment comes, humanity will face a choice. Do we preserve Mars, or do we claim it? Still, the pull of Mars is irresistible. It's more than a planet. It's a mirror reflecting our deepest desires. To explore, to survive, to evolve. Every era of humanity has its frontier. Once, it was the oceans. Then, the skies. Now, it's the stars. Mars is only 140 million miles away. In cosmic terms, that's next door. It's the one world we can reach, the one world we might transform. And maybe, one day, a child will stand on the red soil, look up at a pale blue dot in the sky, and ask their parents about the planet their ancestors once called home. And on that day, the story of humanity won't end on Earth. It will continue on Mars. Because perhaps the most human thing of all isn't where we're from, but how far we're willing to go.